is actually a trivia. Yeah. And Carmen's own relationship to her chickens, that's been a really vital part of her process uh, yeah. and understanding what it means to Carmen. I love you, Daddy. Yeah, she's a little girl. I don't think I'm going to love it. It's hard. 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 It's hard.
construction. I purchased the house, I think, in April or maybe like maybe like one month before. I, I don't remember. I've been living in the tent in the back next to the chickens. Um, and the house has been getting completely reconstructed. Um, and it's been a process and it's sort of parallel, you know, like it's been interesting because it's parallel to the show. And, you know, I make a lot of work in my home studio and during the the run of the show, the show has kind of created the space for me to incubate uh, a, a collaborative process with the collaborator. So I'm really excited that Daniela is going to tour and to see Mary McGuire, who's also one of the collaborators. Mary, say, Hello. say hi. <laughs> and, um, and also working with Amanda, um, who's I also count as like a collaborator, kind of part of the work. Um, Cedric, who's not here, but... Um, Cedric Ty is also another one of the collaborators. My mother, Carmen Vargas, is a collaborator. Young Chun, who runs Commonwealth and Council and is a friend, is also a collaborator. Um, and, and there's like so many people. Cynthia Vargas, who works in my studio, um, in many ways she's like a behind the scenes constant collaborator. And friends and family who like have really kind of uh, been a big part of the process. So. So thank you so much for being here. This is this means a lot to me, and um, and I guess uh, with that, uh, I can turn it over to Daniela, who's going to give a tour and begin with a land acknowledgement uh, to lead us through the the process. First, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna run inside the house to grab something. I'll be back. <laughs> but we should try to make it feel like it's a gathering in Carmen's home. Mm -hmm. We're like trying to deinstitutionalize ourselves. <laughs> and um, so let me hold on a sec. <laughs> has been and is and will be the land of the Tonga people who they have been taking care of them. And um, I have this little Avalon that Julia Bogani, who passed a few years ago, she was an amazing Tonga educator and activist. And um, we did a project at Lace where I used to work. And uh, she gave me this, she gave to all of the family, the Lace family uh, necklace with this little turtle. Mm -hmm. um, so when Carmen was creating the miniature exhibition that we're going to see inside, um, I went to my house and I was like, I'm my partner here, he loves miniatures, and I'm like, do I love miniatures? And then I went to my house and I was like, yes, I have tons of miniatures in my house. But then recognize this, um, and I just thought it was very special to share it with everybody because it's the miniature of a turtle. And I remember, um, you know, of course the turtle is a sacred uh, animal. And I remember she saying like, the turtle is also navigates around the ocean and goes through different process and um, it really makes me think about all the people that migrate to this place or the people that have been displaced um, from this land um, and I really want to share it with all of you and that's like basically my land acknowledgement um, trying again to like uh, break with these like formulas that we have in the institution, in the art. Um, so that's like my, uh, my piece of uh, you know, like plan acknowledgement. Um, you can pass it around. Just return it. <laughs> I'm just going to talk a little bit about the collaboration. So Carmen invited me. She and I, she was one of the first people that I met in LA artists and I went to a studio when I came 10 years ago from Mexico City came here to study 
So I have been able to see her process since then, like 10 years ago, probably like nine. I can't remember exactly when we met, but she asked me to collaborate with her and I was like, oh my gosh, I have this new job. I, it's like a lot of things and I have my old job and I'm still doing projects for them. Carmen was like, you know, she was like, oh yeah, you're so stressed out. You need to talk with your body. And then she's like, I'm going to yoga classes. <laughs> you should come with me. Yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, I don't know about yoga. I'm like so bad. I don't have discipline with any like body thing. Um, and she has been helping me to, <laughs> to go like twice a week to yoga. It's a huge thing for me. Like it probably is like three months ago. Um, but that has, you know, helped me to reconcile my body with the labor, the intellectual, I don't know, I think intellectual is mm -hmm. bougie, but the thinking <laughs> labor of organizing exhibitions. Carmen's work is so connected with the museum, but also her studio, the city, the house. So everything is like in the same place. And I feel like that's what happened to all of us and how can we value that labor, but also not participate in the exploitation of our labor that we do constantly. And I want to recognize the labor of the people of ICLA, you know, because being inside the institution is really hard and trying to support artists is really hard. Um, I feel like sometimes we receive the the, like the hard part because we need to resolve it and then we need to talk with the administrative part and make it happen. So I believe in the people that works inside the institution, but also I believe in the people that is outsiders. Being in Boyhood, you become super aware of um, displacement, the massive evictions that are happening. and. Um, and we all know that our art institutions are also involved in development. So we were talking about like, how can we like have these conversations? So her house is under construction. That's also a big labor. Thank you for making like she clear out all these things. You know, that's like important to receive you all here. Um, so I want to donate my fee to one thing to help, uh, help Carmen buy something. And we, we joke that I became then the, the donor, no? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> my $500 fee uh, went to buy that window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then that, when we become the idea of like, oh, it's Daniela's view. But honestly, it's all of your view. And then, she basically took out the exhibition of the institution, bring it here at her home where she actually produced all the work. <laughs> 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 Representation of the uh, Comandante Ramona. 
and um, she's um, that easy so yeah I was like okay I just bring in all these miniatures and then I was like oh, I think this is too big and actually it turns out that she can give the walk through <laughs> so it's just like uh, you know scale to what Carmen did. yeah and make sure you can like yeah come in and like yeah. check it out. It's like yeah. she's also like um, you know has the the gallery guy. Yeah, the exhibition guys. The exhibition guys are provided. So so please please you know if you need an exhibition guy, you know I mean, he's Um, I have been researched a lot about them, and I'm very inspired about their thinking, and I use it a lot about for like thinking around art, and they have this idea of the caracoles, the caracol is um, a shell or like a spiral, oh, you need to. <laughs> um, that is actually is a caracol. Um, I don't know what's there. Autonomous Zapatista <laughs> territory, truly. And I gave it to Carmen. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is like ancestral, you know, knowledge, uh, the miniatures too. But like the spiral or the caracol, like in Espanol, caracol means like the shells that are like that one. You want to sh uh, show it again? But also the snails are caracoles because they have like the circular. Mm -hmm. So the caracol is the figure that the Zapatistas use uh, in their autonomous territory. Um, it's like truly autonomous in the jungle. They are very hidden because the government keep pushing them. It's a you know it's a movement that has been for more than twenty years. But they organize their different territories in caracoles, and um, for them. Sorry, I, I tried to print today, but the printer didn't work out. So for them, uh, you know, that the, they call it caracoles instead, like cities or barrios or municipalities. And they call it caracoles because there, that's where they gather as a community and they take decisions. So there's like an auditorium there. And, um, but at the same time, is where they, they invite people from the outside world to come and learn the revolution. Um, so I'm just gonna read a, a definition of caracoles and you will understand what's going on with that window and this being the Caracoles will be like a door from which communities come and go, like windows to see ourselves inside and out like speakers to send far our word and to listen to the word of those from afar. But overall, to remind us that we should watch over and be aware fully of the many words that inhabit this world. So I just think like Carmen's work has a lot of that, like inside and outside. And this game of like bringing outside the exhibition here is that. You know, like, and also being able to look at from the windows. Also, the caracol, if we all walk in that direction, um, kind of turn, keep, yeah. keep walking in that direction. It really, like, if you walk in a spiral, uh, it helps you to see different perspectives of the show, of the place, uh, or whatever you are, like, thinking. So, um, 
Uh, I don't know. Jackie? Ah, I see Jackie. Just... What are you seeing from there? Can you describe what are you seeing from there? Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm seeing the drawings in the back, the grid of drawings, but also its relationship with the beams in the space. Mm -hmm. And little slices of different parts. And um, where are you seeing from from your point of view? Oh, um, yeah, I'm seeing, I guess like my eye is sort of drawn first to this um, little corner here um, and then there's also this like layer of paintings and things beyond that but this I feel like I'm like drawn to this kind of yeah. section um, it's filled with like there's lots of little almost of, like note cards or letters um, and then there's like, many things like kind of on the like sculptures on the floor as so. well um, what can you see from here? <laughs> I'm looking mainly at the top edge of the whole space, um, and I'm also noticing some of the like pieces that have, are holding it together on the outside. And I also have a straight line to the Zapatista who is lying down. Yeah, I think also I forgot to mention that she's a representation. Comandante Ramona, she's, she was one, uh, she passed of cancer, uh, but she was one of the first woman leaders of the Zapatistas. And also she was very short, uh, and uh, but has like, you know, like a very powerful voice and spirit. Um, so I, yeah, I just think it, it was like important to share that. Um, what do you see from there? I'm very aware of my shortness. Yes. <laughs> uh, I see barely maybe the top quarter. I see no artwork, the tops of the columns. I see the fabrication of the back, the map pins, and all different angles. But yeah, I'm very aware of my stature while looking at the map. Yeah, so that, you know, like the idea of the spiral, if we can keep going that way. Um, just around, uh, so you all can see different things from here. Which is something like, I mean, this is amazing. Like, each artwork has a different yeah. So I think each artwork is like, it's like a gouache, it's colored map on site. Um, so each each one is painted, um, you know. Like, so if you saw the show, then you can kind of recognize the works too. But I love this idea of keeping with the spiral going, kind of see, you know. And then like, yeah. So the the like um like I said the the comforting object and, and stuff are made by my mom, um, and the the, the flat work was made by me. And I love that they're like at different scales. Yeah, like on different scales, like the other, other, like that's actually pretty big. My mom is like, everything is two inches. So even if it's like big, oh. <laughs> like you know, in the, in, in the other show, yeah, like that one is like very small. Yeah, so uh, Carmen and I were thinking about like, oh, we should give a lecture about the history of miniatures, you know, revolutionary miniatures. And um, I just remember about the you know, Mayan cosmologies, uh, the pre-Hispanic cultures, they have a bunch of miniatures. And, um, you know, like for them, creating a, a small objects is used for traveling, because there's a lot of, like, the thinking about mobility, um, that now we call it migration, or the Americans keep, like, you know, trying, not the Americans, everybody, borders, nations, you know, all that shit. Um, but there's like two interesting, there's like the allusions in, in Maya culture that is like this little, uh, almost like a duende, duende? like elf, um, that you can have in your home, but they have their own life and you can have, you have to like, they're like the guards of your home, but you have to give them offerings. 
Uh, there are the Cabahuiles, who are um, from the Mayan Cachiquel uh, area, more from Guatemala. And uh, they have, you know, like the Cachiquel things that inside each object, like this one, the, the comforting, comforting objects, are like once you create an object, there's like a spirit living there. So, Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. So, so what was your experience like, uh, Carmen, of uh, working at a large scale and then creating the same object at, at a small scale? Oh. What were the similarities, crossovers, and then It's a different way of like looking because when I was making the comforting objects, it was like the action of making it, and it was an embodied thing, and it was putting the energy into you know, with my body into this, the, the, the material that was being integrated into this comforting object. And then in the sort of remaking it at the small scale, it was actually like looking at the, the like the, instead of like the action, it was like trying to retrace my steps. And it was a different way of seeing. I think like in one way it allowed me to appreciate the amount of work in the show and see it from like this other way. But I think about, I was actually thinking about embodiment. I forget, I was having this conversation with Patty Chang today, because mm -hmm. her class came to, to, to see the show. And it was, I was thinking about the spiral and how it's like a different way or a different perspective of understanding disembodiment through the, the looking and not like, because they're not, like this is, these are not the same, like they're not embodied in the same way. But it's like the being able to see them from this other perspective is like, this other view, like this, this like literally a completely different scale. Um, so that's been a really odd, <laughs> like uh, process. I'm still trying to understand what that is, but I'm curious about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks. For the collaborations, I invited each collaborator uh, with a handwritten note, and this is Daniela's. It has the spiral. This is Mary's, mm -hmm. this is Cedric's, Young Chung's, and my mother's. Mm -hmm. And this is made from like a recycled piece of like, probably a spring or some kind of packaging. Mm -hmm. And that's my mom's wee feel on the, on the toothpick. Oh yeah, you were? Uh, Passive? Yeah. This is my mom's wee feel on the toothpick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Herman, you, are, you might have already mentioned, but the pigmentation even on the model magic, right? Did you oh, yeah. yeah. So, so the pigmentation is color matched. So like all the colors are like trying to color match it with wash. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. the pigmentation on the model magic works is also with, with wash. They're all like painting mm -hmm. the post-its and everything. Mm -hmm. The, you know, these are Mary's books. Mary, did you see your book? Yeah. yeah. You want to talk Mary about books. books, Mary? Mary's books. So, as part of the collaborations, my mother and I had, uh, what's it called? Uh, we had a uh, rope binding sessions, rope play. And so we did like these different knots, and it was amazing. We would bring out the play space, which is the rolled circle that's right there underneath the letters. We would bring out the rolled circle, and then do our rope binding there. We did it for three months, twice a month, usually like, um, or like once a month for two days. So two, four, six, so it's been six sessions. Yeah. Will you two continue to do your sessions on a regular basis? You know, I don't know if on a regular basis, but it's, it's something that was so embodied and really taught me about, uh, I don't know, like, like my, my my mother was teaching me like sensuality for the very first time. That was very new. I think for both of us. Yeah. 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 Oh. It's, it's, yeah. 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 So we were pretty to ask Carmen questions. We we're like, yeah. you should go back yeah, in the like, pile. Yeah. Yeah. Journal. Yeah. Yeah. Journal. Yeah. Don't take the art, yeah. please. Yeah. Still see the art. Yeah. You can look at the exhibition guys if you need references. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a presentation. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.